What I'm making here is an air bladder of sorts, which does the same thing as a pressure tank for a well, for example. So basically, I'll have these uh, two inch pipes and these one inch pipes coming together and they'll make uh, an L-shaped tank and then water will push against it and then the air will push it back out and that will be checked by the action of three hydraulic solenoids. So it's kind of a novel idea and we'll see what happens. The concept is to build up enough pressure to actually clean out a, wa a watering bowl essentially. So to spray out all the sediment automatically but it's going to take a, a certain action to build up the pressure and then release it suddenly. The only problem I have and it may not work because of this is uh, I have half inch hydraulic solenoids here. I might have some other ones that are nicer but I don't want to sacrifice them to this project. And I'm also limited to about 200 PSI due to this. So we'll just have to see what happens. Here's my finished result. So just a quick explanation. This is my inlet, which is half inch. This is my outlet, which is three quarter. Now the reason it doesn't matter again is because I'm still bottlenecking at half inch, but hopefully it will be enough vigorous pressure to have the same result I need. I really like T plus two, not a sponsor. I tend to use Teflon tape plus some kind of uh, Teflon paste in conjunction on any kind of threaded joints that I do. In case you've never used PEX before, it's really awesome stuff. It's uh, freeze proof, handles decent temperatures, a decent temperature range. And uh, I prefer this crimp style, which uses <laughs> one of these, which you can see I've gotten a lot of use out of. This is universal, so you can do any size PEX with crimps or clamps. These are stainless steel, one time use. You can remove them and uh, kind of a pain in the ass, but you can do it. Now let's show you how this works. There we go. Now uh, there's a piezoelectric. Oh, actually it is still working. Yeah, right here, this piezo lights up when you uh, have sufficiently clamped it. This stuff's pretty forgiving. I have a lot of line outside buried. That's PEX, just direct burial. Seems to work fine. Couldn't say if it's supposed to be that way or not, but I have a lot of it out there and it has never given me a problem. This is the finished result. It's very hodgepodge, going between three different types of systems. You have PVC, PEX, and uh, hose and the hose is a requirement due to the nature of these solenoids. And uh, I did actually find some markings on these. I usually bought from an eBay supplier. He had a uh, store, it was like Velves for Projects or something like that. It's uh, uh, E-H-C-O Tech, Echo Tech or something, but not spelled E-C-H-O, instead spelled E-H-C-O, might be a knockoff. DDB-CS-120VAC and that's a range of 3 to 145 PSI. If I had to guess, my line is coming from the pressure tank is probably around at least 40, maybe as high as 60 PSI. Well, this is kind of a uh, giant failure here. <laughs> These valves are always on and then when you apply current they turn off, which is exactly backwards from what I need. 
So it turns out these valves work fine. They're not always open, but they do have a bias. So in one direction, the water will always flow, and in the other, it will actually stop until it's open. And not all valves have a bias, so that threw me, especially because there is no indicator of a bias. <laughs> I figured it out just on a whim. I decided to take one of these and blow on one end, and sure enough, it went through, and then I blew on the other end, and, and it did not go through, and then I realized they had a, a bias. So, I just finished this uh, contraption, and uh, I can say that water was getting up to around, I don't know, it might have been as high as here, it's hard to say. So, this may periodically lose its, its air, I'm not really sure. I have a good angle on it now, so it might hopefully maintain its air pressure up here. Uh, the water is actually on right now. Let's see. I haven't worked out the air from the system or anything. Looks like good flow, but I got this nifty gadget when I was last at the hardware store. It's by Rainbird, and it's a PSI gauge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my normal PSI, and then I'm going to measure it with uh, some pressure. All right, so let's check our PSI. Oh, wow, that's higher than I thought. Uh, we're at almost 60. Let's call it about... 58 PSI. That is actually much higher than I thought it was. Okay, so <laughs> nothing like uh, holding a live wire. So I have this solenoid here. We're at zero on the PSI, and uh, because of the nature of its sort of check valve bias on that valve there, it's not a true representation. But in theory, our central cylinder has pressurized already. So all I have to do is actuate this and see what kind of PSI we get. That's not as much as I thought. I'm going to try opening this one. Let's see if that changes anything. Hmm, it doesn't change anything. I was kind of expecting this to sort of just have like a blowout kind of effect, but uh, apparently not. However, Let's give a quick test on uh, just seeing what this looks like on the output. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that, that pressure tank is working. You can... <laughs> Here, check this out. Yeah, it's, uh, that's just based on the direction of that. Let me, let me try aiming it up higher. Yeah, it's actually making it past that tree. <laughs> and the funny thing about it is I can hear the pressure tank refilling every time. <clears throat> the, only, the only question is how well it's going to work over time. Uh, so that, that at this half inch, even bottlenecking at half inch here, this thing shot out a good, uh, uh, probably... Yeah, about 20 feet or so. Heck, I might as well quantify for you guys. Let me go grab a tape measure or something. So it's not super relevant, but uh, offhand with a tape measure, I can tell it's at least 22 feet that it was spraying. So it's, it's funny because the actual PSI wasn't really affected. You know, we're still at only 58 PSI when it's actuated, which is the same as we got out of that spigot over there. However, volumetrically, <laughs> There's a pretty big difference <laughs> because it's it's filling this up and then it's depressurizing this as a reservoir and uh, spraying out. So that's how we're getting that 22 foot shot straight off the pipe. And I realize that you city slickers probably have really good PSI and volume, but this is a you know about a thousand feet of half inch pecs going between a bunch of conversions and stuff. It has a check valve in the way. In fact, this is going through two check valves just to get out to here. You know, just to get out to that coop out there, and then that's another, you know, roughly 100 feet of uh, pipe infrastructure, and then it's getting over here, getting bottleneck going through all this bull crap, and uh, you know, and then we're still getting that much volumetric pressure, enough to spray this 22 plus feet out that away. Well, this is kind of a big hairball. 
for some reason Pex always ends up kind of being a hairball, but it's mostly because of the confinements of this box uh, and my uh, unwillingness to uh, break out a bunch of parts to organize it more, like some right angled parts and such. Anyway, this is pretty much done plumbing wise. The electric will be a significantly smaller area. It'll just be a little box inside of there. So I'm not too worried about the plumbing being a giant hairball like it is. So uh, you can see here, I have these sticking out. This is sort of the anti-freezing point. Beyond this, this can freeze, but it shouldn't because all of this will just drain out via gravity. So everything within the box hopefully won't freeze. I'm leaving some of this exposed partially because I just ran out of foam, but partially because I don't think it really matters even if it does freeze. Um, and I don't think it will freeze. I, if it's a problem, I can always add foam later, you know, it's not a big deal. So, again with this. So this line will go all the way down to a bowl over there, spray out the interior, fill it up, that sort of thing. In fact, I might even switch to a more shallow bowl to be more conducive to automatic clean out via water pressure. So, at this point, I can just close this up and the next steps will be focusing on the actual uh, mechanical doors and the electronics to drive them. The electronics are already done, but I have to wrap up the final programming for photo sensing and uh, potentially talking through the internet and that sort of thing if I want to remotely control the setup. If you enjoyed this, if you found some inspiration, if you thought it was neat, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you.